the town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting uh, being held October 20th, 2021. Time is now 6 p.m. Meetings being held in the main meeting room, Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, uh, chapter 30, section uh, 30A, section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if te technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item or on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices here on 8 Conway Street uh, with remote participation details noted uh, Dial in number 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Uh, go on. Uh, for Zoom, uh, go on to the Town of Deerfield website and click on the meeting and the Zoom link will be there. I call the meeting to order. Welcome. Okay. Looks like you're the first one on the agenda, Denise. Okay. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm just reporting on as I, I think we said last week that I'd come back and report on the members on the Connecting Community Initiative, and we were able to, I think, get in touch with everyone with the, except, with the exception of one person. So I'll just read off who we have at this point. For the Finance Committee, we have Julie Chalfont, Community Center, Senior Center, Dave Wolfram. He was, Dave was really excited about having another committee. Town Commons Committee, <laughs> Kate Lawless, Planning Board, Annalie Wolfkull, Senior Housing, Lily Dwight, Capital Improvements, Carolyn, Conservation Commission, Tim Hilchey, CPC, Lily Dwight or Tim Hilchey, we're not clear about that. They said they'd both be happy to report on that. Uh, ZBA, Jennifer Remillard, Senior Center, Trevor. That's, That's the Center. operational. Yes, the operational who, part. Who over part. Uh, the library, Satu Zoller. Recreation, Becky Zoli, Energy Resources, M.A. Swedland, Open Space, Andrew Leapson, and the park, we've got Chief Pachurik. So we've got a great group of representatives, and what we tried to do is take all the different committees and have represented, someone to represent each committee. Uh, hopefully we didn't miss any, but if so, we'll... we'll and do you want to just, for people that maybe hadn't attended before, mm -hmm. just kind of give an update again on what our plan is, do you, or anybody else want to oh. do that, just so that... Well, see what we're talking about. I, I so, so we we this came out of our senior center, I mean our senior housing committee, yep. in that we started meeting with different committees to try to get input to the senior housing committee, and then it was clear that everybody was very siloed. Yes. And my biggest problem with all these things that are happening is I don't have a vision. I you know every time we talk about it, we have a little bit different of plan. And we have pots of money, like we voted $140,000 to um, pave around the town hall. But why would we pave if we're going to rip it up and do some something with, you know, different buildings, whatever? So, and every build, every time that in the last two or three years, we've we've had these pots of money, like for the town common, yep. for the, you know, potentially to do a Leary lot match, to do, um, 
you know, just the different projects of town buildings assessment, the senior center activities assessment. We have all these pots of money, and 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 it actually, and then we have our ARPA money on top of that, and we've got to figure out a big vision. I, I want us to decide what we're going to do, mm-hmm. and and then march forward to it. Mm-hmm. I I I'm really open. Yep. And I'm not like preconceived anything. Great. Let's just get everybody together. Let's be creative. We have the library project. We have senior center needs. We have senior housing needs. We have all these things happening. We have just got to get organized and be creative. And, and the timeline on this is short. We want to meet because I would really like Denise, when we have this vision, to go with us to Boston if we can. Great. To um, try to figure out how, you know, because that two years ago, pre-COVID, we went to Boston and we got that woman to give us a pilot waiver to do the senior center, you know, community center library project together. Together, and then she disappeared. I don't, yeah, I, I, I think, don't know yeah, what happened. COVID happened. Really did. Yeah. I mean, Casey's first week here, I she know, met, we with, met her, with her, and then, and then the second week was COVID. COVID hit, and it was all over. And this woman just scared her away. Yep. <laughs> and and so I agree. We definitely we need to have the vision. Let's decide what we're going to do, and then we go to Boston and we and corral we, some money. We do have proposals right now from two architect design firms um, to help us with that. Just so everybody is aware, we have proposals to get a master plan vision going. And so lay that out there. I can give you those proposals, and we've worked with one already. The other one is interested, so we can talk about that too. But you're right. We need a master vision plan and then prioritize those items so that we can um, understand the, the debt load of all those projects so we can really prioritize what we're going after first and second and third. And, well, right, because we have our debt limit. With yep. with the sewer projects, we have a debt limit ceiling ho- holding over our heads. We've never yep. had debt before like this, We've so mm-hmm. we've got to be pay- mindful. Yep. So I, I see your hand raised, Casey, but I, I do want us to set a meeting date um, so everybody needs to look at their calendars. What? I just wanted to say something about the conversation we're having right now. I wasn't able – normally I would update if there's something that happens – like an item and anticipated, I normally update the agenda to reflect mm-hmm. it as soon as I figure out it needs to go on there. I wasn't able to do that and get it up on the website and get it posted. It did come in after Monday mm-hmm. evening. So Denise is here. I didn't realize that I should have, you know, I didn't realize how fast this was going to, the response from Denise and mm-hmm. gathering information was going to come back. So right. I wasn't able to update that. But this is what I would consider in my conversations with, Chair Wolfram, an item unanticipated. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Just well, I, for, for clarification to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were, I was just going to, I mean, I thought we could do it under select board announcements because this is a, you know, follow up from our meeting, but right. whatever. However, I, I said I'd be back after the last select board meeting, but I guess we did. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, since we have this timeline in mind, we have till the end of January, or, you know, mid-January, say, um, w- when do we want to meet? Well, I, I think we were going to discuss that. I mean, we did we did speak with everyone. Um, I know we're sending out a survey, and I spoke with Lily. I don't know whether we necessarily need to have the information from the survey. It's just a few questions prior to the meeting. But the way I thought we would structure the meeting, the first one would be probably longer than you know, subsequent meetings, um, and just have everyone be prepared to say, hey, this is the committee, this is what we're working on, this is the timeline. Yeah. Um, I met with Brenda a couple times just to check over the chart of accounts to see what money was associated with what committee, mm-hmm. and, you know, to my understanding, there's not a lot of wiggle room, or certainly that, I, that I don't know, and I know that um, monies from the ARPA are potentially designated already. So that's, you know, that's another discussion that's not really, that I'm sort of unaware of, you know, how much money we're able to. Well, we haven't voted, but I think there's consensus that we wanted to use, number one, we, our staff is really stretched. So the reporting to the ARPA money, we wanted to have like a major project. So Mm -hmm. um, we did 
there was some discussion because I was pushing the discussion on the social worker person, you know, community mm-hmm. health worker, but that was a very small amount. And then the rest of it, we were thinking of doing in the Leary lot um, to promote, you know, we had just done the tourist overlay district and when, and the synergy of all our breweries, we, we need to have a place for people to come into town. It's not right. stressing out the neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And with parking, and we got to have sufficient parking for that, and bring down that economic development to our village. Mm-hmm. So we were thinking it would be easier for Casey to report out the ARPA funding if it was one giant big project, and um, then we would have started, you know, follow up on what we just voted at town meeting to promote the Leary lot. Obviously, we've got to do the land swap. We've got to do all this stuff. To get it going, we got to go out to bid. We got to have, you know, a design. Work, yeah. a There's a lot of work, but we're going to move on that pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And the, um, the land swap has to be town meeting approval, right? Yeah. Any yes. land, mm-hmm. any yes. land purchase yep. sale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but th- we could have a agreement with the person, and you know, with the with, the, and then yeah. I mean, I they're interested. A, I talked to him a while ago, and. He, as soon as he was free and in town, he was going to reach out. I'll try to reach him again. We can get an initial meeting to just And we need to talk to Gary. Because Gary. Him. What is his real plan for there? Right. What does that look he, like? He's very interested in everything yeah. like that. So we need to work all, on it. There's a lot of work together. to do. It. And that can be part of this committee, too, is that that can make sure that we're kind of dri- you know, driving. You know, that could be the cornerstone of, of how we're going to mm-hmm. do the rest of the stuff. Mr. Chair, sir, you have a question from Denise. Perhaps we could have a sort of internal convo, you, me, and mm-hmm. Jennifer. Sure. And sort of figure out what might be good in terms of planning. She's out on a leave right, right. now, but when she gets back, right. maybe we could do that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what time frame you all want to set this meeting up, but maybe we should have something of a structure to take to a meeting. Would that be helpful, Denise? Yeah, that would be. I mean, I've, I've, I've certainly thought about it, as I was beginning to say. I think the first meeting will last longer than the others, but, <clears throat> you know, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I like to start on time. I like to end on time. And, you know, when people are reporting, you know, give each person X amount of time to report. And I think for some meetings, obviously, um, we'll be highlighting some of the committees more so than others because they're much bigger projects. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, once everybody sits down and everyone has an understanding of what everyone else is doing, I think that's the first step, you know, for moving forward. And then, you know, I mean, we'll continue as we go along. I mean, it's, it's not as though we've got absolutely everything figured out, but yeah. I think we've got sort of a basic structure good to begin with. And, you know, I think it's a great group of people. Great. Great group of people. And they're pretty excited, and I think they're really all action-oriented. Yep. Which is... Very much. So. Excited. Very excited. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Get moving, excited moving forward. It's a great retirement job. <laughs> they don't get paid for it. <laughs> well, Denise, you. you see, we, we, we really were going to hire a, an economic planner, so <laughs> being, you know, having you retire and just sort of Slide into the that, committee that chair above my my job. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can join the rest of us, but you know, yeah, right, right. I'll be a lifer. <laughs> but at any rate, if you have any other, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Okay. If not, um, Thank you. I. Well, I I just want to. I think we should. I think we should commit to a meeting. Um, it should be an off Wednesday. Well, okay, that's another thing I did get, and sorry, I did not bring that to Did me. anyone? Did I think the off Wednesday, because I did meet with Jennifer, and she had a listing of a lot of meetings, but I didn't see anything really on Wednesdays aside from select board Well, meetings. I know that off uh, meetings, uh, yeah. yeah. Wednesdays Dave, tend to be Dave, um, usually you have Wednesdays, not a problem, right, here, getting here? Well, Tuesday okay. and Wednesday. Not town common. So we could. They were looking at Mondays and stuff, so, yeah. So how about, like, can we can we sort of like just say November tenth? It's an off Wednesday. Is that is that? Do you feel like between now and November tenth, you could get we could get organized yeah. enough? Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? For this meeting, it's CCI. Okay. This is, this is we came up with this. This was one of those cackly meetings that we had. Yeah, yes, CCI. The brainstorming session. Yeah. So November 10th, and we'll what, start what? up. Do you want to just start, just do Zoom? Or yes, Zoom, I think. Remote? Okay. Zoom. Zoom because it's too, it's too many people. 
Do you want to do six? Or do, is that too early or six too late? It might be too early for some people. I mean, it's fine for me, but I don't know about others on the committee if, you know, they've got kids. It's going to be a long meeting. Dinner. Um, and how does everybody? 30 maybe. Excuse me? 6.30 maybe. 7 gets kind of late. Yeah. Like, we're, well, if you have a long meeting, it's kind of late. You to start do. It like, Let's try 6 because we do 6. Okay. Okay. In the morning. And, and we'll do 6 um, p.m. It'll be a time management challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, so six. This, this was, I mean, we even have, we have a logo, CCI logo that we're going to break. Man, down. oh, I, man. I, oh, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, yeah, I'll show you. I just spoke with the designer today again, so. Great. Yeah. No, this is like 100% organized because of Denise. Denise well, is pretty cool on this. So, everybody. Anyway, please. this is a good post-retirement, Denise. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm, I'm excited now. Ask Before you get rusty, we want you to keep going. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say, darn you, Carolyn. I know. Anyway. Great. All right, great. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Thank you very thank much. You, um, thank you, Denise, so much, yeah. honestly. I, I really you. joke around a lot, but honestly, I, I'm so appreciative. Oh, no. Hey, I'm happy to do this. Seriously. I like challenge. Yeah, this is a big challenge, but we seriously need help. And it will really directly affect your tax rate, so it's a good thing to do. <laughs> any money, any money that we can save is good. Any money that we can hustle is good. Thank you. Sorry about the mix-up. Mm -hmm. You want to hit on the. Um the after action thing, Carolyn? Oh, yes. Um, well, I just I want to bring up one other thing that is really cool. I, I know you all heard it already, but I do want to say it in public meeting. Um, it's the 10th anniversary this, this December of the Resilient Communities Group that I've been sharing since De uh, it's December of 2011. And it was an awful year, 2011. I don't rem think if people remember we had terrible blizzards in January and into February. It was, you know, huge back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back storms. Uh, you know, the crews were out all the time. Our highway crews were out. Then in June we had, uh, well, we didn't have, but there was tornadoes in Springfield yeah. and that whole southern part of, of Massachusetts. It was terrible. And then, um, of course, then Irene in um, August, the end of August, and and that was, and then October, Snowtober, just before <laughs> Halloween, and I I happened to be chair that year, so I had to cancel Halloween, and that was, you know, my phone was lit up. Oh yeah, blinking. that was no fun. Uh, uh, we had no lights, no electricity, and no Halloween. That was traumatized PS. <laughs> <laughs> on that scale. Anyway, um, so, or PTSD on that one. Um, and then the first week in November, we had our landslide from Steam Mill Road that came through and down to Wapping Road and into 5 and 10 and blocked up Mill Village, Culvert, and oh my gosh. It, it was a really, year. now that you bring it all back, mm -hmm. it was really an, a wicked and eventful year. Yeah. Uh, that's all I can say. And um, so it's a tenth. So it got a little grant from Natural Resource and Conservation Group to um, have a work group put together this committee. So um, we had 22 communities participate up and down the Deerfield River, up into Vermont, and we did this through the conservation districts, which I happen to chair. But the reason why is because we could work over the state line with Wyndham County. Um, Group. So we've been working with the state of Vermont, the state of Massachusetts agencies like DOT, and um, we did rivers and road training uh, here in Deerfield. We had, uh, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, Mass DOT came with their stream bank, you know, their boards on mm -hmm. the, you know, stream bed boards that they showed how water worked, the rivers worked. And it was a really great training for all our local um, highway crews. And then we um, also had uh, a lot of work on the Deerfield River of what, what, how the river moves and where it's going to move in the future so we could anticipate putting in culverts 
Um, we've had about $76 million worth of work done up and down the river here in Massachusetts. We still have, you know, at least double that amount to do, but um, we, were, we were being resilient way before it was trendy to be resilient. We were doing resilient replacement of infrastructure and doing trainings and stuff like that. And um, Deerfield, Deerfield probably got about $12 million worth of projects because of, in the last 10 years, because of this group. So I, I'm very excited. Um, I wish we could do more because we have more like damage on River Road, stuff like that. But we are in a better position because of this group. So we have um, a kickoff meeting on December 2nd at 10 o'clock, 10 to noon. And it's going to look back at what all the stuff that we've been doing for the last great. 10 years. And then on Monday, from 1 to 2, um, John Fields, who is the Fluvio Geomorphic person who does studies the rivers, he's the best one in the country. He's from Maine. He's going to do um, a, a, what the work he's done here on the Deerfield River. And then on uh, Wednesday, the 8th, 10 to 2, or no, 10 to 3, we're going to have um, – the rivers and road portion of it, Mass DOT is going to go over their projects and how they're going to work with us as communities to do more work with us, right. hopefully. And then on the 9th from 10 to noon is um, a wrap-up of all the federal and state agencies who are hoping to have EEOA um, Climate Katie come and speak and talk about, you know, uh, the state's willingness to use ARPA funding to do more of stuff for us. So hopefully out of this, we'll get some more money for the watershed. And Thank you for that work, uh, the leadership. Well, it's it really exciting, I have to say. Yeah. It's very exciting because it has paid off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it's money that we can't afford. I mean, like the damage, 3 to $4 million worth of work um, along River Road where we thought we were going to get it from FEMA. and. Yeah. I know. And it's stuck with us. I mean, we yep. can't, this is unbudgeted. This is, it, climate change is financially impacting us terribly. And yep. we've got to figure out how we're going to deal with it. And we've got to have reliable sources of money. Yeah, that and would help. I know. And so anyway, I'm, I am excited about that. And hopefully it will work. Right. We'll get some money. Good. So, and then... Thank you to Trevor. He came and spent three and a half hours. <laughs> it was painful, but it was the after action report for the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition, which I co-chair. And we had a really good turnout. Um, we went over what was happening and with COVID. with COVID in this past year. There was three, really three different things that emerged from it that we didn't really have a chance to pursue and and we got to follow up on. First was the timeline. They talked about a activating our emergency dispensing site, like who activates it, but it really wasn't, for us, it was not an internal one because any of us could have done that. We just, we just started phone calls and, you know, passing information and stuff like that. So we activated ourselves immediately just because we wanted to share information between all four towns. But the timeline when they did the vaccine rollout was what was concerning to me. It was available in December of 15th of 2020. And you have to remember, it was, there was not vaccine really available, but no one was asking for Franklin County. Right. And that was really the big issue. Who asked for Franklin County? And so finally, Greenfield activated themselves as a single town EDS and said to the DPH that they would do first responders. And we were able to, we were ready, but we didn't have, you know, the nursing, the medical part. No one was, was allowing us to use the medical part, which was, you know, our MRC and FERCOG part, you know, because mm -hmm. we're part of the health district. So that, that needs to be worked out because we, we were allowed to, to have clinics, you know, December, February 18th. So we, it was only a two-month lag, but 
we could have certainly stepped up and done first responders and started the ball rolling if we had that medical portion. Yep. So that needs to be sorted out. Been a lot to sort the, the second thing is, uh, you know, the FERCOG, once they got involved, they like to use the MRC. And, and I think that's fine for, like, Greenfield did not have a list of volunteers mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, so going through the MRC was fine. It didn't affect their town. But for somebody like us, we still want the MRC to handle the medical or FERCOG right. to handle the medical part because, you know, who gives shots is, you know, I don't want to sort that out. But I'm so careful when we, we have four towns that are represented in our EDS. So every shift, we've always had shifts because we do, we have always in the past done, you know, um, drive through So, you know, you're outside and standing up and stuff. So we've always done shifts. And our treehouse one, the first one we did, we had too many people because we had shifts and the FERCOG didn't know how to handle our shifts. So, you know, the other ones we ramped down, you know, people were excited. So they came and they stayed and then people came early. So there was, there was too many people, but it still is a community event and it's very important to us that we use our volunteer list. I have 140 people and the reason we do shifts is so we can maximize the number of volunteers that have experience. Mm -hmm. We don't mm -hmm. tire out everybody and, and that we have a constant pool of trained people. So for, we want to make sure that we have the ability for the non-medical volunteers, our police, our EMS, all our greeters and our check-ins and everything is our, so all four towns are represented, not just right. the same five volunteers all the time. Yep. Um, and the third thing that happened is, you know, we had all been training EDS for years, whether, and then obviously we stopped doing some of the drive-throughs when we had, you know, no free vaccine anymore because it's, you know, 20 or $30,000 worth of vaccine. But the big deal now is technology, and um, we got our volunteers trained on PrepMod, and then we switched, and we have about 20 volunteers now trained on the new color platform. When we had the senior clinic on September 30th, that was the first color platform that was rolled out in Franklin County. It was really good, but the state only had the ability to do one vaccine. We had right. two vaccines. We had regular and high dose. It was not a big deal because we just, you know, did little paper markers for the 110 high dose that we had and gave them to people so that we didn't, you know, and we did. We, we only had two left over, so it worked out fine. But, and we did 214 versus our senior clinic the year before of 220 when we did the drive through yeah. here. But let's face it, we have got to sort out this technology thing because 220 people versus 12,000 that are in our community. You can't, the, right. the, you know, the, the throughput is not appropriate for what we need to do. And so we have to somehow expand and, and, and there has to be a willingness to make sure that we have enough vaccinators, enough medical staff, so that we can truly practice a throughput that is going to be, if we were going to have to protect our four communities, what are we going to do? Because mm -hmm. 220, 214 people in a couple hours, that's great. <coughs> no, no problem. But we have to be able to have a model that is going to do 10 or 12,000 people, which is our residents of our South County. So we've got to work on this technology thing to speed it up. The Laptops are very, very heavy for people to be carrying around, you know, we, and, and in the daylight, you can't really read them. So if we're going to go with the technology, which is a lot different than the H1N1 model that we had done successfully in 2009, then we've got to figure out, you know, we've got to have iPad, e-ink iPads and that you can read in the daylight. We've got to have more trained. We have to have all our volunteers trained to use the computer. And um, we're going to have, you know, there's just a lot of things we've got to work through. So it was very successful. We just have to continue to talk about it and, you know, apply to DPH for funding and make sure that we're ready. That's all. Yep. Meeting. A lot of work still to do. Yep.
and but I appreciate it. I would, there was not not really anybody else from South County except Trevor. So yeah. it was good that he showed up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all that talking and no video? Well, it just went out. Oh, okay. It was there just a moment ago. Well, then I can follow up with the Halloween, you know, um, advice. It's not, it's not that button. Um, everyone just needs to, um, for the Halloween. Here we go. Shut down the camera. Shut down the camera. <laughs> we're doing we're doing really well with our COVID cases, so um, please keep practicing. Um, you know, with your wearing masks if you're outside your household and um, trying to do as much as possible to, to keep safe. And the Halloween, um, what what worked last year will work again this year. So do just be safe. And try to keep, you know, as many activities outside as possible. Have fun. And have fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's it. Because we're not going to cancel Halloween. No. <laughs> once, in my, once in my life was enough. I know, once in mine too. It was not a fun <laughs> Oh, yours was a postponement. If, if we Come do on. cancel it, we'll... Right, it was a postponement, and that was bad enough. Yeah, we'll give give Casey's extension. <laughs> right, that was a, Okay. Yeah, well, I'll just come up with a stock answer. <laughs> oh, man. It's all Dave's fault. I'm just going to always remember <laughs> that. Like it. That's right. No trober and canceling. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, oh man. man. I was such a bad... Oh, that was so awful. So, you have any other yeah. announcements? No. Nope. Okay. So, you know, um, like I said, Halloween's still on uh, between our uh, police department and our uh, South Dakota Fire District, they do an excellent job and hay yeah, ride and stuff. And so, oh, actually, um, the old Deerfield Halloween party is not happening. So, everyone that is usually attends the old Deerfield party should make sure they come to the South Deerfield party. Come early. Uh, um, the schools that you know yep. support the that party with food and stuff like that, they didn't want to. Encourage the activity this year. Okay. Okay. All right. It is canceled, and that had nothing to do with me. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I am absolutely <laughs> sure. I heard it from my granddaughter, so oh. <laughs> they were pretty disappointed. Well, there's more homes in this area. I know they're coming down here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no minutes. No, no minutes. So. Okay. Discussion decision items, public comment policy for review and approval. So um, over the past year and a half, there have been you know, several contentious applications before various public bodies um, with the constraints of participation caused through the COVID-19 pandemic. At times in meetings and hearings uh, related to these applications, it appears that um, discussion and discourse has gone in a direction um, that feels inappropriate to everyone. Um, at the direction of our town administrator, uh, Casey Warren, and the select board, uh, town council reviewed our existing public participation policy and advised us to uh, make some changes to it. And the policy we are reviewing and voting on was prepared with their assistance. Um, it is intended to both meet the needs of the public sharing their thoughts and concerns, as well as, as allow the board to conduct business in an efficient manner. The select board looks uh, at this policy as a step forward towards productive discussion. And uh, the policy uh, is in the packet tonight that we're voting, and um, once approved, will be on the town website for all to, uh, to review. Casey. Hey, Michael. Oh. Hey, Michael. Mike. Hey. hey, how are you guys? Um, Good. The, uh, the policy that we had sent over to you, uh, if you see uh, paragraph two, there's a bold um, word there, sanities and personal attacks. Uh, we did a little bit more. Those two, not, those two words should be removed from there. Uh, there's no case law that supports it, uh, even though obviously we want to uh, uh, not have any obscenities or personal. Sure. 
that have been deemed mm -hmm. to be unconstitutional. So I, my recommendation would be to adopt the policy minus those two uh, uh, words that are in bold in paragraph two. They aren't in bold on mine for They're time. not in bold, no. Okay, so we want to delete those. Delete the, the two words, obscenities and personal attacks, Michael? Yeah, yes. Okay. And I apologize for that. But I did I did a little bit quick uh, a little quick research on that and uh, I, I think just to cover our bases we should be removed. Um, I will make a motion that we adopt the public participation at meetings of public bodies. Um, Can we have a minus uh, the obscenities and personal attacks? I'll second that motion. Can we have discussion? Mm. Yep. Uh, no, we can't. Discussion with the board. Oh, yeah. We can't we'll have just... public discussion, Annalee. Nope. Sorry. And I don't, uh, don't have anything else to say. I think the policy makes sense. And we'll be okay. up for review. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Can we just explain to the public why we can't have public? They can have public comment in the public comment section. Oh, sure. okay. Yep. I, I mean, I, I, I could just say, um, oh, please, Michael, so Michael, that, that would be yeah. great so that people understand. Yeah. So, uh, probably about six, six or eight weeks ago, this was brought to our attention. Obviously I think there was a complaint. So, uh, that referred to our office, uh, and we, in conjunction with the board, we've had a couple of meetings. Uh, we did some research, uh, and we put together a policy that complied with the law. Uh, you had a uh, public participation you know, previously. Uh, we kind of ramped it up and uh, you know made it much more complete uh, in something that I think is more com uh, compliant with the law. But the adoption of the policy, just to get to the public comment uh, for this, is uh, there's not a hearing on this uh, matter tonight. It's uh, it, it's just the adoption of the policy. So there, there wouldn't be a public hearing for this. So that's why. Uh, I had advised Casey earlier that, um, you know, there wouldn't be a public comment for this portion of the uh, meeting tonight because this doesn't require a hearing. It's just an adoption of a policy. And my understanding was because we want to have the ability to go back into executive session. Right. That, that as well. Yes, that as well. Yeah. Um, okay. there, there, there are things that I can't uh, publicly speak about, uh, but uh, that also prevents us from really answering any further questions tonight. And I think after the meet, after this meeting, and this is posted publicly, the public can absorb the the content and and certainly make comments at at, at a next at a next meeting once you've had time to absorb it, go through it, understand the policy. And if you want to make comment at a following meeting, that's perfectly fine. Yes, that's actually spelled right out in the policy that you're adopting now, so. That's uh, right. Yep. Yeah, there will be a time for comment. But we're, not, but we're still not supposed to talk about it though, right, Michael? Uh, yeah, we, I, I would advise against uh, a dialogue. Uh, you know, members of the public okay. can see the, see the policy after it's been posted uh, and they can, uh, comment on it, uh, but matter is still something that's been under um, discussion through executive sessions. So uh, they, can, they can comment, but really I would advise against answering questions or getting into dialogue because like, you know, like we've said, uh, this is kind of an executive session matter at this point and, and it okay. continue to be, so. Correct. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I, just, I just wanted people to understand why we, it wasn't like we we're trying not to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. It might sound a little confusing, but yeah, it's any discussion at between board members should just be with town council and executive session for the time being. Okay. Carolyn made the motion, I seconded. Yeah, all three of us said aye. Call the vote again, because I didn't hear the vote. All those in favor. I, I Carolyn Daniel. I Carolyn Ness. I Dave Wolf. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, 
Well, I understand there will be no discussion, and, and I hear Mr. Kenefic. Um, will there be time for a public comment on this topic, whether or not the town responds to that? I, I totally aware, but um, is there an opportunity for uh, res com comments from the public um, on this topic later, or is this a time to just share? Um, there will be later, yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next thing on our agenda is proposed uh, human resource training. Yes. Great. So um, we had received some comments from the public. I had received them in email, and I think you did as well. And I went, I checked with a couple of my colleagues, and I reached out. Somebody reminded me <laughs> that Collins Center, which is the group that we utilized to do the classification compensation study last year, they also provide this type of human resources training. And so what this is, is it's respectful workplace and discrimination training. And I have the proposal, which is in the packet, from Mary Hardy, who does this kind of work, with another colleague in her office, Attorney Corbo. Um, they've done this, and most recently they've done this work in Leicester. And they also do this, this type of training through the MMA Supervisory Leadership Program, which runs twice a year and is geared toward new supervisors in the workplace, municipal workplace. So this isn't the final draft of it. And in fact, what you have in your packet includes a correction I asked Mary to address yesterday evening uh, before the Hilton Library meeting. So if there's some tweaks that we need to make, mm -hmm. she and I will work through them. That's but essentially, fine. the intent is to learn and discuss how social identities and demographics impact individuals in the workplace, Perfect. know the basic standards and expectations of a respectful workplace public forum, and how to address any inappropriate behavior, including bullying and disrespectful statements. Um, go through the Massachusetts discrimination laws and their application in a municipal setting and understand the expectations in supporting a discrimination-free environment. And so what we would do is we would have training set at various times. What we would, Mary and I discussed having perhaps four sessions yeah. um, that cover workplace and public forum and perhaps do it two days over two weeks. So an mm -hmm. afternoon session and maybe an evening session. Yeah. Um, then a morning, uh, evening session and a morning session in, in the next week. We'd like to be able to create as much opportunity for appointees and paid employees right. to attend. And we would like this to, we would like all appointees and elected officials to attend as well. Absolutely. Uh, I think it has to be mandatory. It is. And it's so I, I did reach out to council about that as well and received yep. an opinion. And we do have that right. Um, and that came in after I published the packet. So, But for purposes of this conversation, um, the cost is about $8,000, and it's possible to start implementing it in next month as soon right. as Mary and I can work through a, deb a date schedule for that. And we would be responsible for scheduling the time. I do yep. have to say, once, once the board, um, sort of, once I sign the contract and we move forward, yes. we may incur holdover costs or overtime costs in yep. order to, pro, to get personnel there. Fun. So I wanted, and when I sent you the email, when I first got, got, some of the information last Friday, um, I did warn you. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's worth its weight It's cheaper than, it's it's cheaper lawsuit. than lawsuits and it's cheaper in, and that's what and it's, yeah. and our, that's what I looked at. And this will give us credits on our insurance. It is the right thing to do, period. Yeah. It, it is the right thing to do. Cost or anything. But and frankly, you, can justify over, you can justify over time, you can yeah. justify the $8,000 to anybody yep. just because it, it will lower our insurance um, liability. So I have a question, a couple sure. of questions. So 
um, do we have enough in contracted services to cover this, or do you view this as a reserve, reserve fund transfer? We may have to do a reserve fund transfer. Okay. Transfer. However, Brenda and I would prefer to wait a little bit yep. longer to see what, what, how it whether shakes out. That's fine. See how it shakes out. That's fine. Um, do you think because this was an unanticipated expense in yep. terms of our contract then? Yeah, we didn't we didn't budget for it, but it, we should have, and I'm glad it's here and. I'm happy. I'm happy this is happening. So the other question was: Do you, does she envision this as a Zoom kind of thing, or does she envision well, this she as, envisions this as, as, as a as a, a in person training? This is one of the details we need to work yes, out. And I know you're still going to have to I do that. I do understand the comfort. There is a question of comfort level with the public. Mm -hmm. So and the public that participates in the meetings that are appointees and elected officials. That's what I mean. Yeah. So we need to make those accommodations. These are some of the details that Mary and I are going to have to work through. Right. So, fine. but I wanted you to have some idea of what the scope would be. Love it. I've asked her if we could add an element of some sort of a training packet that we could utilize to hand to people once they're appointed or yeah. elected. Right. Kind of like an onboarding thing, because I know this was discussed in the personnel board meeting that the last one I attended, they had discussed something along these lines. Great. And I thought it was a great suggestion. Yep. It was just a question of figuring out who to go to to get this type of support right. and training. Yep. Because I wanted to be able to go to somebody that understood the nuances municipal. of municipal government Absolutely. because it is a different animal. And so thankfully, because it's funny, that's how I met Mary, was yeah. this SLDP program Perfect. was how I met her. And she was doing this training and it just, I was thinking about something else. And so I didn't reach out to her directly, but through some colleagues, we managed to find each other. And so I think this right. is a good way to move forward because it is. as everybody's noted, public discourse has been some, has had some challenges lately. And we oh. do want pe people to know that we are responding. It just doesn't happen like that. There's some research we have to do, and we have to figure out how we're going to pay for things. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm hoping so I that... I feel comfortable with Mary. Yeah. I do, too. I she, she's great. done a great yeah. deal of this, because that um, supervisory leadership development program runs twice a year, and it has for the last 13 years. Great. So she regularly participates. And the other groups that work with it are, are um, work at UMass over in Amherst. And so this is this is an element of what MMA does working mm -hmm. with Suffolk Group and a bunch of other right. arms. So it's very helpful. I mean, this this is one piece of the element of the SLDP program, but it's a very useful piece. So I'm hoping that with your blessing, we can get started with it and, yeah, and incorporate think, it into our and onboarding. Maybe we add to this in the future, you yeah. know, because this is not a one-time. No. And so yeah, there is, I had a conversation with a colleague of mine, an HR colleague of mine, and there are some other things that I'd like to address, but first yep. I need to get through this. No, I agree. Yep, it's a lot to take and on. And we do need to build it. this type of stuff in yes. to contracted services because it's ongoing, and if we don't do it, we end mm -hmm. up in a situation where people are unhappy, and we aren't providing the training we need to provide. We need so to. we yeah. are coming out of the COVID crunch, so I'm hoping that we can start implementing this in a, in a structured manner. Right. But it's a lift. It's something it Fairfield has and... done since 1999. Yeah. That was the last. Remember when say... we had sensitivity training? <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I have to say it, it was. It was the turn of the century. I mean, it, it really was. Event. It was a yeah. lot yeah. different. Great. So I'm hoping the yeah, board is see. okay with everything. I see your hand up there. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, since this will be a required in-service, I'm wondering what the enforcement provisions will be if people do not attend both sessions. So we had a com I had a conversation with council about that, Annalie, and those I'm gonna I have a scheduled meeting with her tomorrow, but frankly, I think that piece of it, I want to make sure that we are are equitable for everybody. But I do think people need to attend, and I think one thing that we could do is we could ask people to sign off on an acknowledgement sheet, mm -hmm. but. In terms of what you're asking, sounds to me like it's what are the teeth in this? Well, that's that's, that's essentially a, com a a little bit more of a distillation because by the time we get to the training, if there's packet materials, we want to be able to have something that that we can point to for people. Casey, maybe um, if you could just, as Annalie, um, chair the planning board, could you give her the um, 
legal. So there is there is some enforceability on the time, on the part of the select board as, as council has identified in a memo they sent us today. In terms of what that looks like in practice, Annalie, right. I don't have the answer though. So yes, so if you send her this, I think yes. that will clarify it. So mm -hmm. I'll, I can send you the memo. But well, just in general, it's worth discussing it. I think everyone will be interested in in that. Absolutely, and I think this is why working with Mary to develop the curriculum is going to be key. Yes. Because we want to have, we want to come up with that next step, which is the accountability piece. We know what the responsibility of the select board is now. People, people should want to be uh, doing this work anyways. It's, it's one of those things that I hope That's that true. we'll have very few people that would Resist. kick up their heels and say, oh, I'm not attending something like this. This, this is a must, and especially in today's um, yeah. political environment and just it's just I, it's the I'm right hoping, thing to do. I'm hoping, um, Casey, that um, Mary can address some de-escalation practices. Mm -hmm. We already well, talked about that. Yes. Um, in, in part of that training because um, I, I know in ho our Homeland Security um, meeting, our council meeting yet on Tuesday, we were trying to get money for municipalities to do some de-escalation mm -hmm. training because you know, what happened just with the mask mandates sure. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it, just in general, there's so much more anger. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I just can't believe the difference from, you know, in the 80s and 90s to now. Yeah, it's just unreal. And forum and help people right. treat each and other. This, right, and you know, yeah. how you talk to a person right. across the table or across a Zoom meeting, I mean, right, Annalise? There have been our, lots of times. our neighbors. That, Right, and, and we, we have had just lots of times where and you, you had disagreements, but it was, it for a long you went out the door still talking to people. Now it's like you can't even, I, I just don't know, it's really awful. But apparently Homeland Security will not support anything to do with crowd control or, you okay. know, any kind of that stuff. So there's no Homeland Security money coming for us to do that. But it did that still did not eliminate the need for de-escalating mm -hmm. training. And I think right. part of this would all help all of us who are on boards when it starts ramping up. Absolutely. What is the appropriate um, tool? You know, if we had just some tool yep. in our tools in our toolkit Absolutely. to be able to handle that kind of stuff, it would be so much better because, no, you, you know, it's very uncomfortable. Well, if you look at, luckily, our, our town seems to be pretty civil compared to what you're seeing on the news oh, some of yeah. these board meetings of these you know school board meetings and, and all um but but it's still everybody needs to be reminded that we are neighbors we need to treat each other with respect we can differ on ideas um and debate those ideas but it's not a personal attack so um, I, i'm really looking forward to this training and mm -hmm. so I, I would yeah. make a motion to support this um this this uh Eight thousand dollars to start with for this for this uh, program, and, and I um, allowed obviously Casey to work out the fine details with Mary Cardi on on when it happens and, and the method of how it happens. Um, I will second that. Any further discussion? Um, do we want to amend it to have Casey sign it once? It's, it's under the twenty-five thousand. I yep. was going to sign it anyway. Yep. But... Okay. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was going to sign it anyway. Use that power. Yeah. The only reason I didn't was because I knew I needed to tweak a few things. <laughs> okay. No worries. Yep, this is good. We're happy to do it. Okay. Very, very excited for it. Hearing no discussion. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wilson. Great. Three zero zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next one is. It's the Civic Plus website contract. And I'm asking the board for approval of the contract and authorization to sign. So this is structured to be a five-year contract, and it begins the process to transition the website to a more workable, user-friendly platform. And we did, we did quite a bit of research, included not just the select board office, but particularly the treasurer collector town clerk's office because they do a lot of work online. Right. They do a lot of information lot of sharing online. Yep. So this would be a strong inter interface between the select board staff and the redesigned group from Civic Plus. And an element of the public, like Lily has some strong ideas about how we could formulate a workable site. 
Mm-hmm. So I think by supporting the contract, um, we could get this moving. And I, I would like to be able to do that because I wanted to make sure that, but I had to settle some of the procurement and some of the questions around the five-year contract. So what do we figure the total is? The total, so it's spread over a series of years. Right. If we did it today in a one-shot payment, it would like be $54,000. Oh, but we've spread it out because we know that as we transition, there's going to be things that we need to address every year and make some changes. So when you do a redesign, it doesn't come fully formed out of the box. You make changes and tweaks and, and learn how to use that software. This does include training. It does include migrate, migration of some information, but not all information. And we do have the development piece. So they do a content, content consulting, and then they do the content development, and they work with us directly to see how we want to place things and what we want it to look like. Um, I know Lily um, has a lot less time because she's running the IT program for Hampshire College right now. But um, and if she, I'm, I was going to reach out to her. I do have another resource we could utilize on a contract basis. Well, he's actually done, he did this when Ashfield transitioned to this platform. Okay. I, I just, if you don't mind reaching out to her, yeah, get her up. input. Mm-hmm. When they suggest something or when they're talking about something and, and you don't, you know, from a user, she, she is just so sharp on yeah. all of this stuff. I know, and, and that's what she does. And so I was going to reach out to her anyway. Okay. She, might have a, she might have some ideas about how to utilize their type of platform in a structure that would be helpful for us to disseminate information because this is what she does. Right. But if not, if she is stretched, and I know she's working very hard both on her volunteer projects and her work, if she is stretched, then I have other resources I can rely on. I, I think she'd be able to give you feedback on the user friendliness mm-hmm. of stuff. Exactly. That's and, what we and need. And if some of this stuff is serious, like decisions and when you have to make a choice, having her feedback would be really, really good because of her experience. And it might be useful if we can pull some other people that might have some she, of this experience she, in right. as a working group. Well, and, and Not a committee, but a working group. No, no, no. A, a, absolutely. Somebody to support you so you don't feel like you have, you know, it's right. all on your shoulders. Because there are several people that... I can think of two that I'm looking at on a screen. I know. <laughs> um, well, so it looks like it's a four-year contract right here? It, it's it's four-year structure. The last year is the one that um, we, if we need to it. do any, oh, okay. it, 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 if we need to do any changes, that's where it comes. So and, we don't have, and we don't have a dollar amount on that. It's just no. one, two, three, It's the four. increase. They increase 5% in the fifth year, what it says. Okay. Well, I did have something. We just need a website that works. Yes. Exactly. And I have to warn everybody, this isn't a, a, this doesn't happen at the drop of a hat. There's nope. a lot of prep that goes into it. But and usually there's a period of months where we do testing on it. And so that's the place where some of the folks that have familiarity using websites like Jennifer Remillard and building them could be very helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> I, I just would really appreciate you reaching out to some some of the people that do do yeah we can't stuff. do this in a vacuum yeah we need people who have some out well it would be nice to have feedback if what we're doing is correct too I mean you know in the sense that is it user friendly right they that's, have a much better the, you know is it intuitive or is this not going to work for the average mm-hmm. person you know I mean I can do a test run if I can use it then it probably is going to be the bar is probably okay but let me tell you. She's volunteered to be the first guinea pig. <laughs> but let me tell you, these things can be very frustrating. Oh, I know. And I, and I just want to make sure that you don't feel that you are alone in this. No. We do I mean, really we have community. We don't have the capacity in the office. Right. That's I'm, why I was hoping that even if Lily can't help, maybe we can find some other folks that might be willing to at least test drive some of it or give us some ideas about design that we can use with mm-hmm. working with Civic Plus. Lily is so amazing. I called her up and she went on my computer and fixed me <laughs> from her house. And she's not here. She's no, she went, raising her. I know. She went to my house. You have to call her. Came. She was in her house and she did it from her house. 
because I couldn't get my my computer froze and I I, got, I have a friend that does that for me too so I I couldn't get on the DPH Webex and she was wonderful and it was just she is so capable and that's the kind of person that we have to absolutely and and so if she's if she's got some time I would like to pick her brain but I also am going to delegate this so that the redesign happens with the people that are going to have a real intersect with it. Right. So that's well, going to be managing. Anna, Annalie and Jennifer both have really good backgrounds as well. I know. See, Jennifer? So. I, I was, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, is it okay if I speak with Casey about this quickly or comment? Sure. Yeah. Um, so creating the user and design capacity is my specialty, unlike Lily, which is um, writing code and, and all the back um, backside of things you don't typically see. Um, I'm more than happy to give some input because I think um, as I've been building the Deerfield 350 website for the, you know, for the steering committee, um, I think being able to cross that over and have some of the pieces going into the new town website development, especially all the historical pieces that Peter Thomas is coming up with, you know, it'd be great to have those stored somewhere on a regular basis um, mm -hmm. that people could access. Um, so if you're looking for feedback or, or comment on those, I'm more than happy to, you know, to give feedback into whatever um, this new company. Is it the same company or new company? I assume it's the same because it's the it's same, the same um, company, different type of platform. Okay, great. Well, hopefully it's a, uh, a little more user friendly than the current system. We, we are hoping so, but that's one of the things is I noticed you were on and I knew we had had these conversations about you're building the 350th. So I was hoping that we could intersect at some point so that I could get some feedback from you because I think it would be really helpful for us building it. Yeah, I'm more than so happy to. That. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Anna Lee, too. <laughs> I know pre hmm. pre pre work. <laughs> we need a motion. Or? Do we need them? I'll make that motion okay. that we approve the contract. Second that motion. Are we voting for the whole contract or just the first year? The whole contract. The whole contract. Okay. Let's make a motion for the whole contract. Then. Second that motion. It's good to get people clear access. I, I was jealous of Ashfield's website I know. and we had a working group that did that yeah, yeah I think it's with, important. with as, as Jennifer said so the front the user point. end of it as well as the background end of it I, I know we were very lucky that we had a similar situation where we had two people that were used to working in both those areas so they collaborated with the town clerk this was one of her assigned duties with the town clerk to sort of pull all that together and it wasn't easy work but they did a really good job and when we found some tweaks that needed to happen, they continued to work together to do that with Civic Plus. So it's, I'm hoping it will, it will be a very useful thing that the town will find less difficult to use. Well, I look forward to less complaint. I know, me too. Email, believe me. <laughs> um, and this is funded. Yeah, we, we voted this. I, don't know, I just wanted to bring it up. question to ask. <laughs> Yeah, I knew we had done that. Authorization to sign. Over twenty-five thousand. Yeah, <laughs> I'm asking. <laughs> I don't always ask. We'll uh, amend the uh, a motion to authorize the uh, AC to sign. I I will make that motion. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, David Wolfram. Okay. Sign away, Casey. Thank you. Okay, next thing is the <clears throat> church steeple repairs. So I had received, you had mentioned this at the last meeting last week, Carolyn, the proposal from Peter, from Peter Thomas. Peter had sent um, the diagram of yes. a door. But he wasn't actually building it. No, Jay else. Stryker was going to oh, build it. Okay. So, so the we just was actually installing it. I just wanted to. I think well, you install from inside, right? You can you can go upstairs and it 
just bolts apparently. Yeah. yeah. But P- Peter went diagrammed an existing one, mm-hmm. and um, and and he and he Jay can make it. Okay. Jay Stryker can it. make it. He he has the equipment, and so we just need to buy the supplies. Okay. Let's do it. it. I mean, it's literally it's probably a hundred and fifty bucks. Of yeah. Well, no, there was some there was some hardware in it. Yeah, there's some nuances there, but it's uh, that but it still would be like I don't even know how much it would be, but it, it's very minimal. It's that much. And no, it protects the, the building. The, the, is, that we have to work out um, is just the installation part. So I'm yeah. yeah but that you we have can you can go upstairs that. and you can just bolt when the when you have the proper hardware, it just bolts in. Okay. It, it bolts into the you okay. know you have the bolt bolt parts okay. that bolt out into the loop. Okay. So it's not, not it's just it's not like getting a lift from outside. No, to do we it. don't have to do it from the outside. We don't have because that's what I thought. I thought, oh, we better call DA and see if they have a lift mm-hmm. and see if the lift was high enough to get up there to put it on. Mm-hmm. But you do it from the inside. Yeah, the door. Okay, so that's why I wanted door. to bring it up in the meeting because I, I had talked to them about it and I went back and I read the proposal again and so I just wanted to. Yeah. Somebody I went up it. and put a. A plastic up there. I don't know who it was, but someone put plastic. So and I did talk to Bob about it um, Monday afternoon, so he's aware. And yeah, we could figure it out. Yeah, we'll okay. figure it out. I just wanted to let you know that I I had I had talked to Peter about it, and then I went back and I looked at his proposal, and I wanted you to know okay. that we would be following well, up on it. Yep. Uh, I don't think we need to vote money because no. we have maintenance Small. money. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I, it's just. So the folks in town understand <clears throat> this is just what we're doing to make the steeple weather tight. Yes. Yeah, not fixing it. We're not, not a pole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're not repairing the steeple, the whole steeple as such right now. Uh, uh, the, one of the sections fell down, mm-hmm. and this it's a movable door. It's a movable door that prevents water from getting in, so now that it's down, we need to seal it back up. Yeah. So that we can preserve the otherwise the water from in, further rot. Yeah, right. Water comes into the to the church to the town clock down to right. the ceilings. So this is actually pretty serious. But apparently, someone put plastic up, which was very nice. So I don't know. The other thing we just need to make sure, and um, I'm going to see if Pat can get me the phone number. The gentleman that does the clock every year. I don't remember when he comes. Um, Oh, I don't know. He comes Lamette, once a year. Right? Lamette, I, but, I see it when I sign the uh, Bob Bob I, Lamette. I think it's Lamette. Yeah, he comes all the way out from Pennsylvania and does a series of clocks in the area. So I was just trying to get an idea of when he was going to be around in case this might have an impact on him looking at the clock. I didn't yeah. know if it did. I don't think it will. No. Oh, I hope not. No, we've got to I, see I don't think anyway. so, but no, it's far enough she away. sees him more than I do. She, and he comes every year right around the same time. I, wanna, I know. I want to see what kind really of condition that's in. What, he usually lets us that. know if there's a problem. Good. Because he came in. That people is going to need some. Yeah, he made an appointment. I mean, no to me last year. If we're going to save this thing, we really need to paint it, too. Yeah, it's going to need some res- restoration right. work. A lot of I these know. old steeples do. Peter Peter Thomas also um, has several. I don't want to say several. At least a couple different um, pe- persons that do the, you know, That's specific, kind of you know, restoration work on church, old mm-hmm. churches. So. And there's a few up in Vermont. He and I yeah, talked about yeah. that when he was. So there. he he um, we can get the names of those people if, when when we're ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that we had. I had gone back and looked at it. It's just a question of sort of getting right. getting all the ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. Well, if you, I don't think any of us have any problems. So if you can reach out to Jay Stryker and mm-hmm. and and Peter and coordinate with Kevin, I think that yeah, that's coordinating with Kevin. He and I have a meeting tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. So then the. Oh. Nope. Do you want me to just address the other half of that? Because it was the church, I yeah. didn't put it all yep, in that's mind. Fine. Sure. I had a meeting with Father John today. We have a couple of questions on either side. Um, so we're going to circle back around in a couple of days. Okay. And Sue Corey was there. She had some questions. So essentially we're talking about use of space, yeah. The an agreement that 
sets forth the parameters mm -hmm. of when they're going to be there, what kind of supplies. More, more the operational piece is Sue's, our Sue's right. questions, but from right. our perspective, some sort of a contract and stipend right. for the use of that space. So those yeah. are the things that he and I discussed today. He didn't right. have a lot of time because he had a meeting yeah. right after. Okay. But we agreed that we would circle back around um, after we get some more information from Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. I just wanted to let you know that I had been working on it. So, is there a good chance that we'll be able to have our seniors in that center in November? I need to hear from the diocese. He's, that's what I mean. He's got a question for the okay. diocese, okay. and I have a question for council. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next thing on our agenda is the. Uh, before we move, on, before we move on, can can I ask a couple of questions about the church? Sure. Um, I'm on the building assessment committee and have been um, involved in in looking at the church and identifying problems with both the church and the senior center. Um, and I, I wanted to just make sure that I understand who's who's you know at this point responsible for you know, just general maintenance things, because what Peter and I have been doing is walking around the buildings and identifying specific problems, which we put into or a couple of different reports. Um, the first one I dropped off and you've all seen, which is about the church, but he's done the same thing um, with the senior center. We just figured it would make more sense to, you know, look at one at a time. Um, but with, say, just as an example, um, one of the things that the building committee um, looked at is the rust on the ramp um, in the senior center, and it's it's rusting very very badly. And um, in a lot of places, that rust could just be you know sanded off and repainted, and there would be no problem. In other places, it's going to need to be rebuilt and you know rewelded. But if it isn't addressed soon as with some of the problems with the church, like what you're talking about with the, the door that fell down um, from the steeple that's being replaced or repaired, um, I guess replaced by Jay Stryker. Um, who, who is, who's reporting the problems, I guess, is because I feel like I'm a gadfly, you know, asking you guys to, you know, look at this specific thing or that specific thing, but, in general, would it have been the senior center director that would, you know, ask that the problem be looked at? Or is it something that, you know, people bring each one to you guys to ask for, you know, um, the repair? Well, well, with building maintenance of any town buildings, it's uh, Kevin Scarborough's in charge of that. So it has to be brought to his attention. Uh, say, uh, Greg, if you saw something and he wasn't aware of it, that we could bring it to his attention. You don't have to come to the board first. Okay. So um, Kevin is the point person for all of the buildings. Because the reason I'm asking this is because with the church in particular, you know, it's a new building and it's, you know, they had, when the church was functioning, they had a sexton who, you know, kind of, the equivalent, I don't know if he was called that, but a guy who, you know, kind of took care of those things ongoing. Um, so I guess I'll just um, go to Kevin with my questions or whatever observations. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is, would it be um, Kevin also that would get the estimates? Because Peter um, gave the name of um, someone to the building committee several months ago, and it was you know, one of the recommendations that we made at that time that the church steeple be, uh, the, that the source of the problem with the steeple tilting be looked at by either a structural engineer or someone that has had a lot of experience, which you, know, you guys all mentioned earlier, but can we, um, can we reach out to that person and ask for you know, a preliminary estimate or you know, to get some idea at least, um, and to get the ball rolling of what it would cost to get an estimate initially, or if, you know, the estimate isn't, if he's not going to charge us for the estimate, if we can get the estimate done to find out whether the steeple needs to be shored up or whether it's stable. So my suggestion, Greg, is that we coordinate those efforts first. 
identify the things that, and, and so this is true for the senior center or for the, for the church. There's different elements that are different issues. Um, before we spin our wheels and ask five questions about things that coordinate, we should come up with a, a logistical plan to get somebody in there to look at certain issues. And so to your point about the ramp, that's part of a larger issue at the senior center. That's part of a larger issue because if we coordinate those activities to have them done in a certain way, it prevents us spinning our wheels in terms of time, but also it is less of a time vampire, as a friend of mine used to call it, um, to get the person out there. We also have to find out whether there's a cost to do an estimate. And when it comes to actually doing repairs on buildings, there are thresholds in the procurement laws that predicate how we do things and how long, and that creates timelines. In other words, it's, it's very complicated. complicated. <laughs> the concern it, I have is that... how expensive it is, the more complicated it is. And the other issue is that the town doesn't have a set mm -hmm. in or a... You know, we've needed a general handyman on board for the towns and the schools for years. Um, there's so much maintenance that Kevin doesn't have the manpower for, or even though we say this is Kevin's job to do all this stuff, he doesn't have the time or uh, we have no money to be able to do all of that work. So really, we really, as a town, should fund a person of maintenance that ma maintains these kind of things and fund them with a budget. But first thing to get cut every year because we always don't have enough money. Yeah. So I will say one thing. There's two things that have happened, Greg. An asset management system is in place to deal with complaints in a, in a structured priority system. And for purposes of dealing with building issues, generally at the senior center, it would go through the director um, to building maintenance. Once they got the asset management system up, we can send a request via email to have mm -hmm. somebody look at it, but it gets prioritized within all the other asks. So, that's, that's the method that Kevin is teaching us to use as physically as employees here. Yep. So the other thing that happens is often if it's a manpower issue or an expertise issue, that stuff gets vendored out. In other words, we contact a vendor or another resource to assist us with that. Well, with the ramp, the reason why I'm bringing it up and asking these questions is because... Um, as with the, the door on the steeple, the water coming in is obviously going to do damage to the church in you know a variety of different ways. With the ramp, you've got a wonderful ramp that was you know built very well and it's very thoughtfully designed. It, it's aesthetically beautiful in its relationship to the building, the cover of it, and all of that. But it's self-destructing. The um, the 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 um, rust in some places is already compromising, you know, the the structure. So if it isn't addressed soon, the ramp will break apart, and then you'll have to replace the entire ramp, and it will be very expensive. Whereas having somebody come and put a few spot welds, even just to get it through the winter, will you know, will make it possible to restore it more completely in the spring. But it's um. It's it's failing already, so that's why I'm bringing it up. I didn't realize that. Um, Greg, thank you. Uh, Casey, maybe you can make a note of it. I I know we had talked about uh, putting some gutters on the senior center to dry out the basement because the water is dumping into the basement. So. I was going to bring this up in the town administrator's report. I went, I did a walkthrough with the insurance mm -hmm. uh, claims adjuster Great. and he's preparing a report. We walked through the upstairs, downstairs, basement, and I don't know what that report's going to look like. And again, I don't know if the insurance company will honor a claim. If they don't, then it's on us, mm -hmm. but Absent of gutters, there's other things that are going to have to be fixed anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I say to Greg, we need to consolidate our effort before we address one thing, let's see if we can do it in a larger scope. It may cost us less money. Yeah. Economies of scale right. is where I'm going. 
particularly through a procurement process, because if you did those separately, first of all, they might not qualify for separate procurements. And second, the economies of scale, it's simply in the time to do the procurement and then execute the contract and begin instituting the repairs is, is important. The other piece is, is once we had the, I, I have to let everybody know, last year, our office put together a request for capital maintenance funding mm -hmm. for this building. Yep. The idea was to do it in a progressive manner. We don't have specifically set aside capital maintenance funding for the senior center or frankly, any other building. We have that building. True. The SCEMS building does have yes. maintenance. SCEMS is the only one that does. And it's yeah. funny, it's the newest one. In fact, Kevin and I had this conversation Monday afternoon. But we I'm set that out up. capital, you need to start thinking about your own building. Right. We, we set that up because we've never had right. this money. We're so that was the whole point is we learned our lessons the through the building. The door is broken and, and it stays broken for six weeks. You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But that was the whole point. And it's a progressive thing because we had to get people to understand once they had data, Greg, they could see, okay, these are the things that are identified as priorities to do fixes in the building. But we knew based on funding that we couldn't do it all at once. So capital requests went out a couple days ago, and we're, I'm reminding people, if there's something you want done to your building, we have the study. You can utilize that. In some cases, there's questions about how to utilize buildings, Greg, so that in and of itself could complicate things. But frankly, we're moving in that direction. It's just funding and timelines are, are mm -hmm. there's limitations in the statute for us as well. So I wish it could happen faster. Sometimes, If we had money, it might, but we actually don't have a specific fund for the senior center. Would you be willing to um, work with Sue on and putting together the um, anything to do for the senior center, potentially the church, yep. to, to fill out that capital form? Well, we're going to be hiring a director, and I think that's something the director should be, uh, as we onboard a director, that person should be handled. Yeah, but the timeline is not... Uh, I don't, what's the timeline for the director? We have a meeting next week to so finalize close. interview oh. questions. <laughs> We're working on it, Carolyn. Okay. Well, I was thinking because those forms are due pretty soon. Those forms are due December 1st. Right. Which is so, only six weeks. I am five very weeks. aware of that. Five weeks. <laughs> so yes. if I, I, I would just hope that someone fills it out for the senior center. That's all. Right now, Sue is flat out. That's what I mean. It it could be something that I but collaborate Dave, with the other two town administrators on. But if Dave has a conversation with her, at least you could write down because the new person isn't going to have a feel for the the buildings. Well, we have the study. That's how I that's how I developed it for the okay. town hall. So we have the study. We also now that I went through the building with the adjuster. <laughs> I have a lot more understanding of what's going on in that building. Mm -hmm. I, know, but I, I just, I, I want something like the ramp to be listed as a particular problem. I yeah. think the ramp is listed in the evaluation that we got from GRLA, right, Greg? It was. I think it was. I remember hearing about it before. I just want to make sure that we have some yeah. some documentation somewhere. I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't realize I was muted. Yes, it definitely was something that was listed. Um, yeah. I guess my frustration is that there are many, many things with both of the buildings that you know need to be done, should be done, and then there are other things that are going to cause serious problems if they're not done soon. And there are not that many of those things, but one example is um, another example. With the senior center, there's an actual sinkhole where water is pouring into the basement. So any mold remediation, I mean, there's no point in doing mold remediation if water is going into the basement. As um, I think Trevor mentioned, the gutters, the fact that there were no gutters put on that um, cover for the ramp is directing the water right at the building. So those kinds of things will, you know, do they'll go a long way towards, you know, making an un 
um, uninviting atmosphere for mold or anything else to grow because it will dry the basement out. But as long as there's water pouring in, I mean, this is literally a hole a couple of inches in diameter going right directly through the, the asphalt into the basement um, over at the uh, foot of the ramp. I don't know. I, 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 I sort of feel like it would be extremely useful if, if, you guys could, you know, if we, if Peter and I could take you for just a walk around the buildings and, and point out those kinds of things, because the other things are all, you know, down the road, but these are things that are, um, are going to get worse and cause other problems if they're not addressed we fairly soon. Funding article to make it happen because we don't have the money right now. So we got to, we, the town has to appropriate the money. So let's, let's do that. That's number one. I mean, we know we need to do, at least if we're going to save that, the gutters, mold remediation, all that stuff, we need a funding article and a, and a town meeting to get that to happen. You know, it might not be that much money we could go to finance for a reserve transfer to just to protect the building. If you can. Yeah. I think it would be useful to have the claims adjuster's report. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there's a process rolling. Yep. Okay. Greg, thank you. Thank you. And I agree with you. I'm hopeful that we can do some of this stuff. Thank you. Considering the support of the state climate bill, are we? Carolyn had asked me to add this. this so I did some background. I got the fact sheet from the state legislature's site and then downloaded the Green Future Act letter that that woman referenced for you, Carolyn. Um, I, I did not. I hadn't done enough research on this, and um, you know, I'm on everybody's list for this kind of stuff. <laughs> I didn't feel comfortable advocating one way or the other. Can so, we just review it and bring yes. it up for a vote next? Yes, I, I would be fine with that, and I yeah. am very appreciative of Casey doing the research yeah, on this. For the, something to read. Um, yeah. I'm not. Uh, it sounds reasonable. Yes. We all want to do that. But, we just but, figure out how you the, know, the, the, there's yeah. only, the I, I, wait, one, one. So I didn't feel comfortable. Yep. Uh, so thank you, Casey. Sure. And I, I'll be glad. Good info here. We should be advocating for this kind of stuff. Yeah. But yep. Just gotta know what you know, you got to know what you're doing, right? Right. Yes. Because sometimes there's things in the bills that can really bite you if you're not careful. Yes. Yep. So I will say I didn't download the entire legislature's wording of the bill. I did give you the fact sheet. If you look it up on Google, you can find it right away. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think it sounds really good, but I, I'm... Might you know. call Bob Walden and see what he says about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the impact on the construction trades are going to be the things that he yeah. notices, and he might have some insight. I know when other things like this come across my desk, I often ask his insight. Um, one of the things that is, uh, you know, the job analysis. You know, it is true that you know we should be supporting green jobs. So. I mean, that was attractive. So we have to look at that. Okay. Thank you, Casey. The next thing is a cultural council appointment. I had no idea you could have You didn't read 20, it. I did read it. Sorry. Up I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. 22 people. So the reason I pulled down the cultural council legislative action, so the, the statute, it gives a number, and I knew that because I had been on the Cultural Council here in Deerfield years ago. <laughs> I knew it had an, a number of people, and I couldn't remember what it was. So you can have not less than five, but not more than 22 people. Imagine. So I was thinking about the email. Trevor that's sent me an It's not an about issue that. about appointing a person. Right. So can you imagine right. running a So that's what I wanted you all to know. 22 people is wicked. So, well, I'm, Jennifer I'm, Marapizzi has other people that she would like yeah, well, she, that are interested. I think those people should just send us an email and ask. Yeah. Yes. Because I know it's hard for everybody sometimes to, to make meetings, and some people that are on there, they're having trouble meeting a quorum. So, if we can add some people there, it gives them more opportunity to do that. And, and this is and one of the few committees that there is a, a wide range of the number. Yes. Yeah. So, we have a letter from Emily, uh, I don't know if it's Lurker or Luker. Um, I think it's Luker. Luker. Um, I, yes, you're going to make the motion to? Yeah, I'll make a motion to appoint Emily 
uh, Uker to be. And I will second that. And it sounds um, she's wonderful. She yeah, sounds uh, very great energetic. Resume and very, yeah, very really resume. great resume. Perfect. And, That's wonderful. Um, very enthusiastic. So we're thrilled to death. Any further discussion? No. Just All those in favor? So glad she can come into a meeting. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Yes. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Great. Zero, zero. I knew you would catch that, Trevor. Yep. <laughs> I just can't believe 22 people. I know. It, it, it I knew it everybody off, team, but I oh, killed her. I thought it was I, mean, I guess there's not going to be a big I mean, deal to go from to seven or eight people. Right. Right. <laughs> like I said, it's we're one of the committee for this somebody. wide range. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Plus, now that I have it, I can send it to Jennifer if she needs it. Merrick, easy. <laughs> I um, just because I down I I downloaded it into a PDF format so she could take a look at it. Well, just make sure um, uh, you let Jennifer know because she's really wanting to put a meet. She has to put a meeting together to do the okay. awards. I mean, to do the start her process mm -hmm. of awards. I had um, just a little bit unanticipated. I had forwarded you an email just tonight about um, I still get the um, Mass DOT bridge inspections. Kevin and I, for some reason, get them. So I forwarded on to you to send out to others. Uh, you oh, just you probably haven't got I your haven't, email I yet. I haven't seen but it. But they, they inspected. Um, I get them every once in a while. The state does them and whatever. So I'll, I'll continue to forward them, and I save them in a file. But they inspected... Um, Waitley Road in Bloody Brook. I'm not sure exactly. I, I assume it's over. Um, it's Waitley Road, um, which I think is on the other side of 91. Yes. Is that right? It's, it's yeah. over by um, Siddeley and the UPS. Yes, yes. Right exactly. There. And I think there's, you know, there's really uh, the. the so it's the over Bloody. It's Waitley Road, the Bloody Brook. Yes, Waitley Road, Bloody Brook. There's there's some minor stuff in the wall. Um, you know, it's mainly the. Um, Guardrails, you know, the, a lot of the guardrails are down, and the they're all cement ones, and the cables are gone. So there's some improvements that we need to make, and then the roads start to crack and stuff over it. Um, but and then a lot of vegetation over it, and it's you know we can't do every one of these, but so this is fairly new, you know. So if at some point if we can try to clean that stuff up and it's hard. Like, how do you get to every one of these things? We have, I don't know how many culverts, 200 something. Yeah. But I was yeah, just thinking, um, you know, when we get a report by them, if, if we can, I don't know if Kevin can put it in his budget next year to try and tackle some of these things. And um, It would be actually, it will save us a ton of money if you can do that. Yeah, somehow. So maybe. Um, I'll, I'll talk to him about it, but just, I'm okay. sure he gets this too. And I don't know. I just yeah. wanted to mention it. And, uh, Okay. But it's in good shape other than that. There really isn't a huge amount. Uh, just the railings were the issue. They, they didn't um, inspect uh, still water, did they? No, I have not seen still water inspection okay. at all yet. I haven't seen one for a while. No, we do have to get together back on that again. Um, just to follow up on that, Casey, mm -hmm. when you have a chance, not you don't have to do it right away, but can you just check and see where we are on the still water bridge? Um, it's DOT had... Was I think I out an email, and I don't think I heard. But right. and, and we need to issues. we need to keep following it because remember what they originally proposed was shutting down for three years, and what we came back with was this was a couple of years ago. I had asked for one way, one, yeah, and that adds like thirty percent to the construction costs. They got back to us and they said, okay. But we haven't heard anything, you know, is the design gone out to bid? Are they putting the design packet together? Because once, once the design goes out to bid, it's too late. So we need to make sure that they're doing that one way. Because mm -hmm. there was nothing in writing. It I was, think Kat, I'll ask Kevin if he knows who to talk to. They're debating where to put that granite island. <laughs> we could use it. We could use it. Right. They could, there you they go. could dump it off at the Leary lot and we could use it at the Leary lot. Yep. We didn't have to transport it out of town. I could just bring it over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, on mail. We received a letter from. It isn't signed, but residents of Steam Mill Road, they wanted to further discuss 
the road. I have a meeting set up with council to discuss this and a couple of other issues. Okay. Um, I, my suggestion is that I complete that meeting mm -hmm. and take some of the comments that were discussed at the last, or provided from the residents at the last meeting and work through whatever council suggests based on the statute. And I have to, t I have to say, um, council's opinion is based on the statute. Yeah. Um, council is, when we ask council for an opinion, we ask council to essentially reference statute and case law. And statute and case law helps determine what their opinion to us as to how to proceed. It's not about one person. It's not about the lawyer. It's about the statute and the case law that could be problematic or that predicate what the select board can and cannot do in their responsibilities mm -hmm. over such things as roads. Right. So I have that meeting scheduled. I scheduled it with her, so I will okay. return to the board. And, and if you would like to schedule a meeting, um, a further meeting, we can wait do that after, after I talk. Yeah, about. wait till after we get some more data. Yep. Okay. Thank I you. think we we do have another meeting on Steam Mill. Mm -hmm. We probably should have council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair? Annalee? If I could ask a question. Thank you. Um, in relation to what Casey just mentioned in terms of council giving opinions, um, it did seem, if I remember correctly, at the previous meeting, there was a comment of about council basically telling the select board what the select board should do. And I was a bit disturbed to hear that. It seems like, first of all, I mean, we didn't elect council, we elected the three of you, but also that, um, that the select board has a responsibility as they try to figure out directions to go to ask council different ways to approach things and that council gives, as you just said, Casey, an opinion rather than tells the select board what to do. Could you please just elaborate on that a little bit? So council's opinion is based, like I said, on case law and statute. And if there is an allowance to, or if there's an ability to frame whatever the response is in a certain way, often that will get indicated in an opinion. In some cases, statute is very limiting and case law can be even more limiting because case law is essentially litigation that has created a precedent, is my understanding of case law. So what we try to do is they look at the nuances and we try to problem solve. That's one of the things that I do when I talk to counsel about anything. Um, and so if there are nuances that we can utilize to make better decisions, to recommend to the board to make better decisions, that's useful. I think one of the, the misunderstandings last week was the fact that this concept of council telling us what to do. No, council is reflecting what the statute and the case law is and saying, based on these two things, this is what we think the select board could do with under the authority that they are acting with it. So that's, that's part of navigating this. And so some of the information that we received from the residents at last week's meeting, I will take to council and say, hey, look, this came up. Is there something we can do? And so that's always the intent, Annalie. But in the heat of the moment, sometimes those nuances don't rise to the top of the conversation. So that's why I wanted to make a clear statement about what we utilize council's opinions for and why we ask, why council's opinions carry certain information. Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And you have a report for us? I do. It's been a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, at least two meetings a day for the last couple of weeks. So that takes away from you know, certain daily and weekly tasks. Um, I will warn you guys, you have a sewer rate hearing at the next meeting on November 3rd. What? A sewer rate hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys need to set the sewer rate. 
Oh. And in one of the meetings that Trevor and I both attended, we met, we had our monthly update meeting for the wastewater treatment plant upgrades project. And then subsequent to that, we met with financial staff to discuss some of the information that we were learning. And it, it actually impacts some of the debt information we have. And some of these are routine meetings that we just update each other about where we are, for instance, with our USDA loans, with our payables, that sort of thing. But I wanted to let everybody know that often what comes out of those meetings is task force that we, Kevin takes care of, I take care of, Brenda and Barb take care of. And we're coordinating very closely with USDA on our pay applications and monitoring those things, particularly with the assistance of DPC, Dave Prickett and his staff. So we're keeping up with that, but it's, it's an ongoing process. And I think Trevor usually gives the updates, but I just wanted to let everybody know the background that happens here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are we being affected by the sewer and water pipe shortage that's happening? I think we had, I, I think Waterline and DPC were handling that yeah. prior to even us starting this phase of the project. Yeah, okay. they were ordering a lot and, and, a, and really, got really good rates when we did the, the pipe work. I, I, I was just going to say, I I, I think this is that. fairly recent yeah, from what be, I'm hearing. It could be everything. I know, but I, I, I know that there, the sewer and water pipe shortage was starting to affect municipal bids. I was on a meeting oh, okay. earlier, and people were complaining. Maybe we were lucky, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it may affect what we want to do. You know, Down the road. Years for, for, well, for, uh, uh, hopefully it will get sorted out, but yeah. uh, some of the contracts were not being able to get let because there was no pipe to bought, right. buy. Okay. Can you believe that? Oh, I, I can. And, and so that goes Completely. right back to this planning concept, which happens in these meetings, is you know, us understanding that going forward, it's in terms of how we're planning, we need to start making some allowances to put some capital money aside to replace some of the pipes in Old Deerfield. And we start small, like we did with putting together a capital funding source for this building. And that's why I've encouraged all the department heads, if there's something that you think we need to start working on, Greg made a, made a case tonight, um, put it together in your capital plan and submit it and keep it fresh because that's what Capital Improvement Planning Committee wants to see. That's what the bylaw requires. And frankly, it helps us create a framework by which we can stagger this stuff. Yeah, but I don't, I mean, from what I understood from the people that were on the meeting, it, you know, they were shocked that they, they, couldn't, they couldn't go forward with the contract. Okay. There was no pipe. I did send you the two mm -hmm. estimates. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good. So, yeah, that's, that's, I just was I'm not wondering, right? Like, yeah, no, I haven't, yeah. haven't seen it yet, but everything in, in the building industry is. Maybe it was because we got windows into until March. So, I mean, it, it's horrendous. Um, you can't get aluminum. You, there's resin shortages, um, lumber, um, just even, even just lumber, you know, yeah. jam extensions on a window right now. Pella won't send them loose. You could normally send them loose and do them in the field. They don't, they can't get any clear pine right now. It's just, and they make wood windows. <laughs> it's yeah. really tough right now for, I mean, that's just one little industry and um, everybody's struggling with materials. It's, it's brutal. Wow. And we struggled with prices when we put out the phase one bids, how yeah. much they came in. So imagine, I yeah. think maybe yeah. we just got lucky with We got early stuff. down there for sure, but we should look at that for the yeah, for pipe stuff. Do it a certain time period, right? And I did send Casey two estimates from Prickett for engineering, I mean, you may be touching on this, but the engineering for phase two and um, uh, discussing a larger project, whether we redo South Deer, uh, Old Deerfield or like, South Deerfield and- you know, Did we get to look at the um, study that DA? Yes. And so that was part of our conversation. And that was basically, DA commissioned a, uh, a study of what it would look like if we did two different options. And so they had a preliminary analysis for us, but frankly, we thought it needed a little more, we needed a little more information before we could bring it forward. And so there's two different options and they're, they could be expensive. It's a question of how you want to frame it. In other words, it's hard to talk numbers out in public. It's, yeah, it's hard, it's the numbers themselves, it's really a question of, do you utilize 
the old Deerfield station as a pumping station, or do you repair it and keep it online as its own wastewater treatment plant? And so those are questions I know that have been bandied about prior to even yep. us, me coming back. But it's a conundrum because that's the next portion of what we need to do mm -hmm. in order to fortify our wastewater, entire wastewater treatment plant systems. So Dave and his staff had started working on that. And so we've got some preliminary information, but we really need to dig into it a little bit more. And well, it's yeah. gravity fed versus pumping. Right. So right. you have operational costs. Yep. They're tremendously different, so yeah. and that's got to be weighed in. Yeah, yeah. and, and you know, it's certainly cheaper to fix a plant that's there, but the problem is we can't get enough people to run the plants now. And then so 50 years in the future, it's in a flood zone. Irene will come again. Like, there's so many reasons why that should be turned into a pump station and pumped to South Deerfield, but the cost is a whole lot more depending on the route you take, whether it's town I think road or could, state road. I, I was just going to say, it's a gravity-fed system. You should be able to, um, you know, somehow fortify the the walls enough to. Um, I mean, Irene was a 500-year storm. Yeah, well, yeah. So, and it, and it didn't flood, unlike Greenfield. Right. So, I think we could fortify it enough that it, it you know, structurally come up with some way, and that it could be paid for by the MVP program. Mm -hmm. Um, supposedly the MVV program is getting doubled money, so maybe this would be a thing that we could apply for to, you know, protect that. And enough. keep it, just keep it a pump, as keep it, it as, as a, a station. Right, keep it as a gravity-fed station, be, I mean system, because that's the cheapest rather than a... Cheapest term. Short, short term. Term, right, especially if we can get no, paid for by grant. Well, that and means we make not, a pivot in how we approach our MVP grants and focus just on this one thing. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's what we have to do. So we'll we'll have a further discussion on that. Okay. Well, doing right. that though negates us from ever picking up any other development north to south. So so those users are stuck. We can never grow the economic base of the of the system, right? So and you could pick up a whole really lot this, more. Relieve this. Relieve any any pressures on the septic system. In in a route we would choose, that might be something that would be useful. It's completely wet. Like, to try and put another septic system in there, it'd be yeah. brutal. I know. So expensive. So your thoughts are like, well, so if we do that, could you then put a second pump station and pick up all those houses on the west side of 91? You know, there's, they're big good. questions. But, so we're not ready to have those discussions, yeah. you know, out to the public yet. We still have enough But these are some of the things that came up. Like a like a senior center or a church or this is like it, it's hard to make those decisions without all the all the data. But we're working on trying to figure that out mm -hmm. and and fig, you know work with the partners up there to help help with that. I, I I feel like we could make a case for the MVP. But then phase two down here, we really need to get rocking on because their their year end I think it ends in December or something yeah. like when's that. When's the so next When's the next round of the MVP? Well, I don't know. Uh, well, that's November 22nd, right? You had to have your stuff in. Yes, you had to have it in. November 22nd for MVP. So do are we going to be to the point where we are going to do the raise of the tanks and stuff? I mean, we could, because Dave did separate that out. Mm -hmm. we should, that should be on part of an MVP. That should be paid for. I mean, it's well, not a huge amount can. of money, yeah. but it, that should be part of the MVP program because that it, what you're doing is is protecting, making that plant more resilient, because that's in a floodplain, too. Well, that's so one thing. That you had already submitted. They had, and we kind of hold, we told we them held off to on hold the back, right? We the mission that they gave us, because it was directly related to one of the pipes. Um, the I can dig pipe. it back up. The outflow but pipe. The outflow then, pipe. Then, if the, then the outflow pipe, part of it is fine. It's just the actual part to the Connecticut River. Right, because the rest you know, is in good shape. Right, so that's a small, mm -hmm. but you know, if you want 50,000 or 100,000, yeah. something like that. And then another part of it was the tank, we're raising the tank heights mm -hmm. so that it, because it's in a floodplain subject to this Connecticut River flooding, all that stuff, that is also MVP resilient kind of climate yeah. change stuff. So, uh, you know, that part 
that Dave pulled out. And again, I think it, about it was it's less than, a, it was about 150,000 or 200,000. Well, to plant phase two, and we'll see where that ties in. Is it this round or is it the next round? And the other what? thing was he, he so, sort of gave us the idea that we build what we need to do and utilize small grants when we can, and, but make it in a, a sort of visionary project that, that encompasses where we can a lot of alternate, spin things off a lot of alternate. to relieve some of the pressure on the townspeople. Right. Well, that, that's what I mean. You know, yeah. it isn't a huge amount, but hey, 300 or 350,000 right. exactly. less that the taxpayers have to pay, why not? Right. And, and our match is that we're already doing the match. So right. big deal. Yep. So, and it's clearly separated um, from what replacement cost is to the additional, mm-hmm. you know, height of the tank. And that was part of our conversation. Yes. So that yes. was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be worthwhile to dig up that yep. presentation that they did. Because they did a, a, they basically yeah. developed an application for they us. Did. They did. We just had when a you, how we parse it would be useful. Yep. We when, might have to parse it into different. When they do the resilient communities thing total from for the 10 years that we've been doing resilient communities group, yes. it, it, it was all these little culverts, mm-hmm. like the culvert, to the original Mill Village culvert, and then this past Mill Village culvert, all these things, they added up. There are like $12 million worth of work that was done here uh, in Deerfield yep. that we collected on that did not have to be paid for by the taxpayers mm-hmm. because we applied for these grants. And yeah. that's, that's huge. Mm-hmm. And, and, and again, it's 350 well, you know, 350. But 350 is yeah, none of the 350. It, it does add up, and that's really what Dave was trying to get a, get across. That's why having it sort of separate from our regular meeting allowed the financial staff to really focus on that. And and but we need to sort of discern where we want to go with it. And and Andrew we might pay for that because we're doing all this other work. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It yeah. just means we make a commitment for that year that we pivot to do something that's sewer related. Yes. Yep. Okay. So CARES Act closeout is upon us. I have a meeting tomorrow with Brendan Sweeney to discuss some of the, the outliers that we were waiting for FEMA to help us decide on. FEMA still hasn't approved Project 1. Oh. So I had a plan. I had talked to Brendan before. I had a plan. I wrote it down. I sent it to him. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. Um, we are also, as I said earlier in the meeting, the working, the search group is working on the director's position. We've had two meetings. We may have one more, but we're also developing our interview timeframe schedule. So okay. we're hoping to be able to get those interviews done the beginning of November. Um, and the other thing is, is so personnel board has been very interested in this code of conduct, some of these code of conduct questions. Yep. And we've had, we had a conversation at their last meeting. They have a meeting next Monday. It's on the agenda. I had an off, offline conversation with a member of that board. And she's going to, she and I are working on a particular thing, mostly her, mm-hmm. but I made sure it got on the agenda. <laughs> I forgot to post the other one. Um, so we're working on some a method to sort of incorporate this kind of stuff into a manual because I have, as I've mentioned, oh, ad nauseum. I'm sorry, I don't yes. mean to make it ad nauseum, no, but it is. the more we encounter some of these issues, these HR issues, the more it becomes clear that if we had a manual, we could be more flexible yeah. and be able to address things in a in a more receptive, proactive manner. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the general feeling I get from the personnel board. It's true. So that's coming up. The other piece that's coming up is we will, and I haven't haven't scheduled it yet, but I have a meeting to schedule to go over the classification compensation plan again so that I can really refine the conversation, present it to personnel board for approval mid-December. Okay. Because we need to have that ready prior to going into budget season. We won't, right. Because of the study, and I, I sort of had a, a robust conversation with a member of the finance committee not too long ago about this. but I can't imagine who. <laughs> but the point was, he had reminded me that while I was gone, they had come up with a schedule where they voted the class top plan. 
So we knew we were going to go back to the table and really discuss the new comp plan. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to present something with them in November so that they have a little bit of time to chew on it. Yep. And so we've been working on that. I've had some help from Mary, but there's some questions that I'd like to iron out. Okay. And and I think then I can present it and they will have a little bit of time to think about it. And Mary's actually offered to come back to a meeting if I need her to for a small amount of money so that we can... Answer questions yeah. that the personnel board might yeah. have. They are going to have to have a hearing about it. So yeah. if that hearing isn't done by January, hopefully the finance committee will cut me some slack. Because so I'm doing my best to no. keep no. within a, a structure yep. so that folks know what they can answer. Great. Good. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for all your work you're doing. I know you've been super busy. And I just want to warn people. So we've had some staffing constraints in the office. Mm-hmm. It's it's the next 10 days are going to be difficult because I'm really the only person that's going to be there after Friday. Yeah. So I have reduced hours and I'm asking people to make appointments mm-hmm. because that's really the only way I can stick to a schedule. Right. Um, and I have to say two or three meetings a day really limits my ability to do work. Uh-huh. So I want everyone to be clear that, that the expectations right now we um, will we'll be handling the the critical things that need to happen, like the daily and weekly work, right. and some of the projects that I know I have deadlines on and, and that need to happen. But if something comes across the desk that have to wait. isn't necessarily a priority in my radar screen, it may have to wait. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to remind everybody, I was not going to be available for the November 3rd meeting. So right. I can try to call in... You know, yeah, you're going to be traveling back from that conference. Yeah. So the sewer, we had talked about the sewer rate setting a couple weeks ago, yeah. but do we, when we set the hearing date. But do we have a ton on that? We have we have uh, executive session that night. Well, it may be worth. We have executive session that night, and that's not something. That's the only time I can get executive session with council. Right. So, and that's at five o'clock, and that's remote. Uh, and I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think Dave's remote. been doing a really good yeah so what might be useful is me to would you like me to limit the yeah. discussion items well, to right. stuff like for, for, the, for that meeting for the just third. make it light yeah we if we have. make it light then light. you then some of the the Unless trickier things or the, the more yeah. complex things we can Let's save for the yeah yeah for sure i i i appreciate that's that fine. i'm no, that's fine. feel confident in thank what you for well, reminding me um, we'll always like to have you all together i know I, I think we make a better team all, all together. I do. Mm-hmm. I agree. We balance each other off. But I'm, I, I have full confidence in both of you. So it's not an issue. I just feel bad. Okay. No, I just feel bad because I don't usually. No, don't. Anything. No, what work you're doing. Yeah. No worries. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to bring in some money. Yeah. Go <laughs> bring the wheelbarrow home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Full of cash. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm going to um, bring River Road yeah, with you. me, and I'm yep. going to try to figure out how what program we can fix that with because right. it's just too much money for us. To do. I know Kevin's been working with DPC on that. Yeah, they have, they have some engineering. They have some I information, do. so I, I, that will be helpful too. Yep. I don't know what it's what kind of format it's in, but right. I think I think one, you know the big the big area by um, the boat, you know. Yep. Just, the Bowhouse area one, that I think you know that's probably between one and two million. Yes. And I think if we have another event, we can use the EWP program, Emergency Watershed Protection Program. I really did think that we were going to be able to use FEMA. I know. It just, it I, I just I I'm, I have to say I I have called and it doesn't look like we're going to. Have any recourse on that? No, you know? I know. And that I talked to Bob Barry um, at the Homeland Security um, meeting just to check, and well, he didn't I know um, Joe Collinsford has been keeping it top of mind and looking mm-hmm. for other things, and she's been she's really upset that it that it didn't I know, make it. I know. She's doing all she can for us for sure. I know, but and I checked. And they, but it doesn't seem like right. it. And Bob Barry, he. Um, so maybe we can do it through the hazard mitigation program, but I, having worked with that program, I don't think it's going to be eligible. I don't. Right. So our best bet is if we have another event, another event, then we can 
Well, eventually, I'm just going to call NRCS yeah. and have them start working on it right yeah. away. But I'm obviously when I go to the conference, I'm going to touch base with the state engineer and because yeah. he'll be there um, with Dan know. Wright, the state conservationist. And we'll have to go that. Anything from Dave on that and stuff you could it's bring not. up with you? I don't know if there's any I've, engineering done already or anything. I just based on. You. The restoration work that I've done in the past, it's, yeah, you know, it's about 100,000, 100,000 a foot. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, it's but then we enough. have that project that was done under Mass Works that's unraveling, you know, by Dick Kalaszewski's house. Yep. And that's probably half a million. And then we have two other spots <laughs> on that are maybe half a million. So, I mean, we have almost $4 million on... Uh, on yep. River Road that we've mm -hmm. got to hustle about, and I, you know, I'm really worried not being able to address those before winter. Yep. So anyway, I'll be. Yep. I will try to do that. Okay. Time for there. public comment. Uh, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, I wanted to to talk to two points tonight. Um, after hearing, um, I believe it was Greg talk about who goes around and does the maintenance, and I understand. Uh, of the existing buildings. And while I understand there's a hierarchy of, of the way that things get done and there's not one full-time maintenance person, um, with the forward planning, it looks like from the CCI and the other projects ongoing, um, whether or not you revamp the existing senior center um, with all the repairs that are to be done or you know rehab, uh, do some modifications to the church, um, it would be really disheartening to see all this money invested for repairs or new structures created um, if, if it were to go, you know, to be um, a town community forward um, common, you know, like all of those things around that um, have been mentioned in the past. Um, I, I really, while I understand there's, there's finance restrictions and things like that, um, it, it really should be a high priority list of, of the, uh, you know, whether it's a town administrator select board or um, Kevin Scarborough working on that, who, whomever's responsibility, um, that really should be coming to the top of the list. I think it's really imperative uh, to get current structures, you know, um, repaired and maintained, especially if we're gonna be spending millions of dollars moving forward. Um, the other point is, and I really uh, feel strongly on this, uh, one of the main reasons I tuned in this evening was because of the fact that you were, had on here the public comment policy re for review and approval. And it's really disheartening to see that there was absolutely no public comment on this. While I understand advice of attorney Kenefic um, was to not have any discussion from the select board. Um, if this is in response to the, uh, the dig, P, um, or not dig, but the ACLU complaint that was filed um, by, you know, other residents. Um, I, I feel like there should have been a lot more transparency. And that was one of the points brought up at the special town meeting. Many folks felt that there was not a lot of transparency in certain things. And I really stuck up for the town boards and said that a lot of these things are online. And here this is posted. I am attending because this was of interest to me. And to see mm -hmm. that there was absolutely no public comment input, um, it's it's really disheartening. And it, it feels like there should be more transparency from the board, not just we're going to present it and we're just going to vote and we're not going to hear anything from the community. Well, I understand this may be a change to current and existing. Um, there's been a lot of feedback from the community not just at public meetings, but just out in general, mm -hmm. in the community that things aren't transparent and that things are not done in a consistent manner throughout. Um, and I hope the board really considers that moving forward. Um, thank you for the thank time. You for your comment. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Annalee? Yes, thank you. Um, in the theme of transparency, I'm wondering what is happening with the policy and or discussions about 
appointments to boards and committees. My understanding was that there was going to be um, some work done on this and I know appointments are happening at this point and at this point um, we're not really certain how our appoint, you know, uh, contestants evaluated, how our appointments made and I wonder what's happening with with that policy, if it's just sort of getting lost in the personnel manual or if there's something that can speed that along. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Anything else? Anything else? Hmm? Motion to adjourn. Oh, second that. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel, 805. Uh, I Carol. Aye, David.